Hi there, I'm the Reverend Danny Crosby, a Unitarian minister serving congregations in Altrincham and in Ermston in the northwest of England. And I offer this devotion as a balm for the heart, for the mind, for the spirit and for the soul. And it's titled, Pay It Forward. We can become the blessings we have all been waiting for. A friend of mine named Ronnie, no, not Molly's friend Ronnie, who the cross between a Jack Russell and Border Collie, but a, a human being who's also called Ronnie. Now, Ronnie's been on a bit of a spiritual journey recently, and he was away this last weekend and was trying to put into practice some things that he's been learning. One of the things was to do a good deed of generosity each day. A simple practice, you might think. He told me that he was in the hairdressers the other day. And whilst he was there, he noticed a couple, uh, one of which was having a haircut. When he was finished, he offered to pay for the man's haircut while he was paying for his own. The couple said that he, he couldn't do that. It just didn't seem right. He didn't know them. But Ronnie insisted and told them that he, he had to do it as he had to do a good deed each day and today's good deed was to pay for this haircut. That by letting him pay for the haircut, they were actually doing him a favour. Well, eventually they relented and they let him pay for the haircut as a favour to him. It was a lovely t tale. I'm really glad he shared it with me. It's great to see Ronnie progressing, if you like. Afterwards, after he told me, I suggested that perhaps next time he finds himself in a, in a similar situation, no, which no doubt he will, that instead of asking the recipients to do him a favour, that he could ask them to pass the favour on to someone else, to pay it forward to someone else. He liked the idea. And I wonder how he's got on with his daily good deeds these last few days. It will be interesting to find out. Now I shared this story with, uh, with Annette who um, produces our monthly newsletter in Altrincham. And she replied and told, emailed me the following story. She said, your friend Ronnie reminds me of two people. The Reverend Dick Burkey believed in doing a good deed every day. I was the recipient of lunch on a number of occasions. And also my dad, who did good deeds, and when people said, how can I repay you? He always said, don't repay me, help someone else when they need it. Funnily enough, one of the people who my dad helped most often was our next door neighbour who had an antique shop at the top at Stamford Road in Borden. The neighbour had a very old Rolls Royce and was always running out of petrol. My dad would go off to wherever the neighbour needed him with a can of petrol. The antique dealer was also a verger at the parish church in Borden and her family always used to refer to him rather naughtily as the foolish verger. <laughs> Lovely stories, eh? Lovely. Thank you, Annette, for sharing them. Now, the reason Ronnie shared the story with me was actually in response to, to something I sent to him that, that, that same day that he shared the story, the wonderful, wonderful story of Love and the Cabby by Art Buckvold. It's a tale of hope and love that involves passing on blessings and compliments to others in the hope that they will do the, research, the same and thus live the spirits of all that they meet. Yes, many may reject the good blessing, but others will respond positively and they will pass it on to others, thus spreading the, the joy and the love. And doesn't the world need that? The world always needs that. It needs it now, though. So I'm going to share the wonderful tale with you here. Now, it's the language probably seems a little dated in parts, and please understand that uh, in our modern understanding of things and the way that people perhaps spoke in the past. So 
I hope you can understand the spirit that this t this wonderful tale, Love and the Cabbie by Art Buckfold is Tobin. He writes, I was in New York the other day and rode with a friend in a taxi. When we got out, my friend said to the driver, thank you for the ride. You did a superb job of driving. The taxi driver was stunned for a second. Then he said, are you a wise guy or something? No, my dear man, I am not putting you on. I admire the way you keep cool in heavy traffic. Yeah, the driver said and drove off. What was that about, I asked. I am trying to bring love back to New York, he said. I believe it's the only thing that can save the city. How can one man save New York? It's not one man. I believe I have made, I have made that taxi driver's day. Suppose he has 20 fares. He's going to be nice to those 20 fares because someone was nice to him. Those fares in turn will be kinder to their employee or shopkeepers or waiters or even their own families. Eventually the good world could spread to at least 1,000 people. Now isn't, that isn't bad, is it? But you're depending on that taxi driver to pass your goodwill on to others. I'm not depending on it, my friend said. I'm aware that the system isn't foolproof, so I might deal with 10 different people today. If out of 10 I can make 3 happy, then eventually I can indirectly influence the attitudes of 3,000 more. It sounds good on paper, I admitted, but I'm not sure it, w it works in practice. Nothing is lost if it doesn't. It didn't take any of my time to tell that man he was doing a good job. He neither received a larger tip, nor a smaller tip. If it fell on deaf ears, so what? Tomorrow there will be another taxi driver I can try to make happy. You're some kind of nut, I said. That shows how cynical you have become. I have made a study of this. The thing that seems to be lacking, besides money of course, for our postal employees, is that no one tells people who work for the post office what a good job they're doing. But they're not doing a good job. They're not doing a good job because they feel no one cares if they do or not. Why shouldn't someone say a kind word to them? We were walking past a structure in the process of being built and past five workmen eating their lunch. My friend stopped. That's a magnificent job you men have done. It must be difficult and dangerous work. The workmen eyed my friend suspiciously. When will it be finished? June, a man grunted. Ah, that is really is impressive. You must all be very proud. We walked away. I said to him, I haven't seen anyone like you since the man from La Mancha. When those men digest my words, they will feel better for it. Somehow the city will benefit from their happiness. But you can't do this all alone, I protested. You're just one man. The most important thing is not to be discouraged. Making people in the city become kind again is not an easy job. But I can enlist other people in my campaign. You just winked at a very plain looking woman, I said. Yes, I know, he replied. If she's a school teacher, her class will be in for a fantastic day. Who knows what one nod, one wink, one word can do to change the world today. It's up to us, but we don't do it alone. Now, I first heard this story maybe 20 years ago at Cross Street Chapel. I like it, even if the language might be challenged a little today in one or two parts of it. But what matters is the spirit, its heart. It challenges to truly pay attention. Something I've been going on about recently, you may have had... You may have noticed that to pay attention is to how we should act in the world. It teaches how important connection is. How we interact with one another really matters. It has its impact. 
In a world in which we can feel so powerless at times, it is important to understand that what we do and do not do matters. The key is in knowing what can and cannot and what we cannot do in any given situation. I'm sure we can all think of interactions that have led to positive change and further positive interactions in our lives. Spiritual living is about bringing these memories alive in our lives. It matters what we do and it matters what we do not do. It really, really does, you know. My whole philosophy, theology really is built upon it. Yes, we are not God, but we can make a difference. We can be a catalyst of change. All we have to do is accept the gift. It's easy to look at our world and despair and give up and say, what is the point? Everyone is out for themselves. If I go out of my way to help another, they'll just take advantage. And what will I ever get back in return? It's easy to do that. It's, it's easy and it's cynical and cynicism is so lazy. There is another way. The way that Ronnie is attempting. The principles found in the pay it forward concept. The way that Art Buckfold suggested in Love and the Cabbie. We can change our world one tiny act, one gesture at a time. And to me, this is religion in its deepest and simplest form, about binding up the broken and manifesting God's love in life. At its core is this life-affirming principle that in spite of a great deal of evidence to the contrary, faith, hope and love do in fact still remain. You see these ripples touch everybody. If we just make a beginning, both giver and receiver and all who are eventually touched by them will be touched by them both the giver and the receiver are transformed by the experience both giver and receiver are blessed abundantly I bet Ronnie's been experiencing that all week I bet paying it forward doing something good and asking them not to pay, pay him back but to pay it forward Pay it forward is an interesting term and one of those classic terms that is of disputed origin, aren't they always? Some say it began in the, in the, with the ancient Greeks like so much of life did. Luminaries such as Benjamin Franklin and Ralph Waldo Emerson in the 19th century made reference to the principle. In his essay, Compensation, Emerson wrote... In the order of nature, we cannot render benefits to those whom we receive them, or only seldom. But the benefit we receive must be rendered again, line for line, deed for deed, sent to sent, to somebody. You pass it on, the benefit. During the 1950s, the, the phrase pay it forward was popularised by Robert A. Heinlein initially by being referenced in his book, Between Planets. Heinlein preached and practised this principle in his daily life, and this led to the formation of the Heinlein Society, a humanitarian organisation based on the pay-forward principle. In the year 2000, Catherine Ryan Hyde published the novel, Pay It Forward, which became an international bestseller and was soon made into a film by the very same title. And this led to the formation of the Pay It Forward Foundation. A foundation that even has its own, own day on the 26th of April, International Pay It Forward Day. A day when millions of people intentionally commit to acts of kindness and caring. Although truth be known, every day should be Pay It Forward Day, shouldn't it really? Pay it forward is, ba is based on what is known as the, the ripple effect, which is really based on the Confucius concept of concentric circles of compassion. Like a pebble dropped into a pond, our actions create ripples that go out and affect others beyond what we could even begin to imagine. It works on the premise that we can make our world a better place if we share, 
if we care as much for others as we do for ourselves. It is firmly grounded in the ethos of the golden rule of compassion, a concept found at the core of every single one of the world's great religious traditions. It is an effort to change the world positively, one, one small act at a time. Everything we do and everything we do not do really, really matters. We affect our world for good or for ill with every feeling, every thought, every word and every single deed. By what we do and by what we do not do. One of the great movements for social good of the, the, that began in the 20th century is enshrined in the concept of paying it forward. Alcoholics Anonymous and the near 200 other fellowships that have sprung from its principles have brought about recovery for millions of people from all manner of addiction. When a person is released from their destructive addiction, they are not asked to pay back what was freely given to them. Freely given to them, there is no price to pay. Instead of paying it back, they are asked to pass on what has been given what has been given to them and to pass it on to others who are in desperate need and in so doing they also pass on pass on they, they, are, they, are, they are themselves receiving the benefit and when they pass it on to the other person they tell they let them know that all they need to do is not pay back to them but to pass it on again this is the basis of the simple movement that has saved millions of lives including my own. When I look back at my life, it blows my mind to think of all the good that people have done for me. I cannot pay them back, but then again, I don't have to. All that is required is to live my life in remembrance of those, of those acts and to keep on paying it forward. To bless our world, all we have to do is remember those wonderful examples that have touched our lives and blessed us with their loving example. Now, we cannot pay back to them what they so freely gave to us, but then we don't have to. All that we have to do is pay it forward and, therefore, and thus become the blessing that we've all been waiting for. It is easy to look at our world and despair and give up and say, what is the point? Everyone is out for themselves. If I go out of my way to help another, they'll just keep on taking advantage. And what will I ever get back in return? But there is another way. This other way is the purpose of the pay it forward movement. We can change our world one act at a time. To me, this is religion in its deepest and simplest form. Binding up the broken, manifesting God's love in this life. Bringing it alive through our humble lives. At its core is this life-affirming principle that in spite of a great deal of evidence, a great deal of evidence contrary to the effect that faith, hope and love do in fact still remain. You see the ripples touch everybody. They touch both the giver and the receiver. And all who are touched by them are then touched by this and it just goes out. It affects the world in positive ways. And in so doing, both the giver and the receiver and all who follow are transformed by this deeply intimate and loving experience. And all are blessed abundantly. For all give and all receive. So my simple message is, let's become the blessings that we've all been searching for. Let's remember all those times in our lives when someone has gone out of their way to help us with no exception and asking for nothing in return. Whether they have helped us materially, intellectually, emotionally or spiritually. Let's re-feel these occasions. Let's meditate on them. Let's reflect on them. And let's come up with ways in which we can pay these debts forward. Let's think of ways we can give back to our world. Let's create ripple effects that can impact 
in our shared world in ways we perhaps can't even begin to dream of. Let's become the blessings that we've all been searching for. Let's remember all those times in our lives when someone has gone out of their way to help us with no expectation of anything in return. Whether they have helped us materially, intellectually, emotionally or spiritually. Let's refeel these occasions. Let's meditate on them and come up with ways we can pay, pay it forward. That we can give back to our world. That we can create these concentric circles of of compassion going out into our world that we can impact in our shared world in ways we can't even begin to dream of we can't even begin to dream of we can't even begin to dream of we can change our world today we can become the blessings that we have all been waiting for and I'm going to end with some final words of blessing because we need to bless our world more we can all bless and we bless when we give ourselves wholeheartedly to life. So let's return to our lives in peace, embraced by the life and the warmth of this time shared together. Let's go in love, ready again to struggle on. Let's go in beauty, shining forth like a lamp to freedom. And may we carry these blessings with us and may we do so in all that we feel in all that we think, in all that we say, and in all that we do. Amen.